Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by ID8 Software. Be sure to check out all of their great Revit applications designed to increase your productivity. Welcome to BIM Thoughts, the thoughts about BIM and BIM about thoughts. We're joined today by Dana DeFilippi, Carl Storms, and Alexis, I am going to butcher his last name that starts with a K. Oh, I don't even have it in front of me. Is it and Katsumbasis? I, that's it. Oh, my God. I, that's from memory. That is from memory. I don't have it written phonetically and down in front of me, Bill. Take notes. <sighs> that's amazing. And we are also joined by the ever popular, the one of a kind, the man himself, Marcelo Scamori. Hello, everybody. Hello. Woo. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for that awesome introduction. I feel like uh, I'm in a fighting ring. Well, it's 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 the most I could do. Huh. So, whoa, whoa. Isn't that the least I can do? Mm, no, not really. Okay. <laughs> it's like the other saying I have, and and the uh, the listeners can use this saying at will without arbitration. If there's anything else I can do, please hesitate to ask. <laughs> oh, Bill. <laughs> Which seems to work as well, too. So, Marcelo, redefine yourself. Oh, man. You're going to ask me that, huh? Redefine myself. I'm not, yeah, well. absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll define myself again. How's that sound? Uh, okay. okay. So, ha, I have been in the industry now 22 years. This December will be 22 years. Working with John Martin and Associates as a structural firm. Been more in their technology branch, doing awesome things there. I also try to push software to its limits, and I try to basically tell the world. So what I try to do in my prof professional career is try to learn something new, try to teach it to the industry, and try to make it a better place. I also have two lovely children and a lovely wife, and I spend a lot of time uh, at home with the family. So that's kind of, that's basically me in a nutshell. Yeah. I think we're all spending a lot of time at home these days. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did buy a Jeep this year, a, a new Wrangler. So now I'm going to go out and explore the wilderness. You're going to take it out four-wheeling? Absolutely. Why would you buy a Jeep and not take it out four-wheeling? Four exactly. Wheeling? Like That's what I'm hoping. That's, that's why I'm asking. I've already taken it out a few times. I have scratches underneath. I have desert pinstripes on the side. It's it's a month old. And you I feel know. great about that. I do. You're like getting the wear and tear. I am getting the I'm getting all the great things. So Marcelo yes. is also now something new. He's he's going he is or is going to be, depending on when this podcast ships, an author, a published author. And I have right here proof that he is a real honest to goodness author now that's photo right. on the back photo true on the back author true uh, uh barcode I don't, is that an isbn number on there uh no this is the proof the proof you got you got a proof so it doesn't have the i but it will be on the it'll have an number. isbn number and everything yeah oh. it will be <laughs> and, and most important part, the first page is intended to be blank. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Well, you need to know that, actually. You do need to you know, know that. I believe me. I have. I have. Well, this book has been many years in the making, and yes, I had to learn all the nuances of being a publisher. And one is, if you have a blank page, yes, then the publishers say you have a blank page. And you have to say, no, it's not blank. I left it intentionally blank. Uh -huh. So you have to intentionally say you intentionally left it blank. But then it's not really blank. It's not. It is not. You're right. It's not blank. Very good. <laughs> That's right, Bill. You and your technicality, you'd be the one to say uh, when the door – and you're in the hospital and the door yeah. say, keep these doors closed at all times. Uh -huh. And you say, why have a door? Why, why have a door if it has to be kept closed at all times? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why ask why? Try to <laughs> exactly. dry. So, There's... Carl, uh, so uh, yeah. what I did, yeah, I gave everybody here uh, uh -huh. a copy, either a digital or a hard copy of the book. So yes. 
peruse it, and I thought it'd be a good idea. You, I mean, this is your show, not mine, but you, it's our I'm, show. I'm ready for I'm ready for uh, for anything you're going to throw at me. Well, first Probably. is Plexus. I think dating? should no. go ahead, Dana. You can go first. <laughs> um, well, we have a guest. I think Alexa should start. I think you're right. All right. Yes. He's he's the, he's new. Oh, thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Let him get a word in edgewise. Well, I've okay. got I've got a few words actually. So, um, firstly, Marcelo, um, I first saw you in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales, Australia, back in 2016. It was my first uh, industry conference me fresh a couple of years out of uni and you actually won the the number one speaker at at uh, that was rtc but it's called built now yeah um and i was in a couple of your classes and uh, you know i it's kind of like the rest is history i fell in love with dynamo and automation from from that point and that's that's where my focus has been ever since um, Are you saying, Alexis, that from those classes that you took from me at it, it Built, that that kind of started you on the path to your computational design expertise? And I'm not lying here, but 100% correct. That's um, wow. that's that's wow. it. That's where I learned Dynamo. I, I took a few classes. Uh, Dynamo was the hot, still the hot topic, um, and um, and yeah, that's uh, the rest is history. Wow. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, and um, I also followed your stuff like um, more recently as well. Um, but uh, this book, which I've I've gone through, and um, I I didn't get the effect that I haven't printed it. So that effect, that build sound effect, it sounds a, it really gives it the weight that it deserves because it's jam packed and um, and it's split. You've got a grasshopper side and a di- and a dynamo side, and and you've got what you can do, what you want to do, how to do it in grasshopper and how to do it in dynamo, and and then you've also got the latest hot topic, Rhino uh, Rhino inside Revit, which is everyone is kind of getting excited about now, and you've got tons and tons of stuff in there, and I obviously have not had a chance to go through the whole book but every single page is like a single snapshot of something that you can do with dynamo or grasshopper and and you've got some c sharp in there as well but it's not the fact that um it's it's something that you can do it's that it's like a rabbit hole that it shows you it gives you all this world of possibility and I'm going to use an example, uh, which I bookmarked. Let's say get element ID, right? Dynamo has has nodes where you can uh, query an element and get its element ID and, and use that element ID to do something else with it. But you've got a page here which shows how to do it with a C-sharp, bit of C-sharp code. But that, so in on its own, it's not, you think it's not, amazing but it gives you the structure of how to set up a c sharp node very simply and and introduces you to 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 the format and i think people that are uh you know starting out and and learning uh, automation tools like this are going to are going to love this book it's going to get people started down that that path of exploring experimenting and learning so i can take a breath now if <laughs> Thank you. Alex. Oh. <laughs> you uh, do I do I have time to, to you, comment? Yeah. Of course, you have time. That's less for us to talk. This is the first time I've actually ever talked about the book. Um, really? Honestly, yeah. It's been a um, it's been a long journey uh, and a very personal one. So to hear to hear what uh, Alexis there has gotten out of it is exactly what I wanted. Um, and thank you, Alexis, for that. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. It it what it does is it actually opens a rabbit hole for people to go down. Uh, and, and if you, if you notice it isn't, I, in the beginning of the book, I don't have a table of contents. It's actually a table of concepts because the idea here is that each concept, uh, is something that you could learn and build on. And it's not necessarily important that you're getting and setting parameters on a structural column. 
It's the fact that you're learning the concept of how to do it and you could go off and apply it to something else. Um, the idea was that practically I couldn't show every single possibility that anyone would ever have uh, using Dynamo and using Grasshopper. So I thought the best thing to do was to make these short, simple concepts that people could, one, learn and apply to their particular content, and two, that they could kind of piece together to make a much more complicated, much more complicated script. And and uh, if you don't mind, Bill, could I do a little um, a little uh, story time with Marcelo? Can I read part of the intro? Absolutely, uh, go for it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, a second part of the intro. Uh, I I'd love to share this with everybody. Uh, it says, "This book is intended for Dynamo users who want to learn Grasshopper and Revit." And it goes on about who could use it. This book's intention is to introduce readers to practical Grasshopper and Dynamo for Revit concepts. There are hundreds of nodes in Grasshopper and Dynamo, and it would not be practical to show them all in this book. Also, this book focuses on out of the box nodes for Grasshopper, so on, so on. Uh, also, uh, just like the nodes, this book cannot practically cover all subjects of Grasshopper and Dynamo. So instead, it focuses on Grasshopper and Dynamo examples that are important to their interaction with Revit. This book is intended to show concepts and not entire workflows through various examples. Each example is intentionally small and typically contains no more than eight nodes. These concepts could be combined to make more concepts, con complex scripts. And then it goes on and says part one is, is, is basically an intro. Part two is the Revit database. Part three is this uh, custom customization, which Alexis uh, kind of hinted on. And then part four is the uh, interoperability idea between whether you're using Dynamo or whether you're using, uh, whether you're using Revit, uh, Revit and, or Rhino. So the idea is that it's, it's I, I struggled with this quite honestly, but, but I came to the conclusion that um, I couldn't put everything in here because um, some, we had some early screenings on this and the, 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 the original I, the, a lot of the feedback I got was, okay, well, where's all the, where's all the MEP? Where are all the examples with materials? Uh, where, how do I manipulate the view cube? And, and my, my, my reaction to all that was if you start to absorb yourself into the book, just like Alexis said, you'll start down the rabbit hole and it'll build the confidence that you need to look into it more. And that's why the, the examples are very small so that it gives you the confidence to at least try it. I didn't want this book to be overwhelming, uh, each example to be overwhelming. So if you can get someone to try it and start it, then you've already kind of won the battle. And that's, that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the intention here. The, the other intention, if I can, uh, one more quick note is that it says, uh, it says, uh, uh, okay, welcome to uh, the, this is the uh, uh, Dynamo and Grasshopper for Revit cheat sheet reference manual. Uh, this book is a collection of side-by-side -side Dynamo and Graspable examples in a one-page summary format, also known as cheat sheets. So uh, just like Alexis said, the idea here is that you have Dynamo example on the right and you have the equivalent Grasshopper on the left. Uh, and um, the idea is, if, is if, you, if you can speak one language but not the other, then you're able to learn it because it's side-by-side. -side. Or if you're new to both. Um, so it's, it's, it was... Uh, it was it was <laughs> it's quite the journey to finally get it into this format. Um, and then another another thing I had to ch a challenge I had was uh, some 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 people on the screening was like, well, why if I know Dynamo, why would I need to know it in Grasshopper if, if it's just saying the same thing? Well, first of all, my 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 whole thought on the industry is is why not? First of all, um, <laughs> it's kind of something I struggled with uh, my whole professional career, like when I first built the elephant in Rhino. I mean, excuse me, in Revit, he was like, why are you building an elephant in Revit? Well, why not? Um, and, you know, so it's, so the idea is, is just that if you, you, you're able to kind of absorb the book and understand the equivalence, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a big help. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to kind of get that all off my chest, but it's, um, I'm glad it's finally, finally coming to fruition. Uh, I've been in constant contact with the McNeil folks who make um, rhinoceros, uh, in, 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 in making the, the grasshopper portion. This book was actually supposed to be done. It started about four years ago. Uh, and Alexis, actually some of those early classes that I taught were the start of the, of the actual cheat sheet format um, because each example is just a one page summary. And, and yeah. the way, yeah. And the way, the way that evolved was I was writing uh, handouts, very long handouts with long descriptions 
and I put an image in there and I realized most people would just look at the image. So then I started putting text on the image like steps. And then I realized that I summarized everything just with an image. So then I, I decided to actually expand on that and just make the whole thing, uh, the whole example, just an image. So, so really um, the, the evolution of this book took a while because I had to basically get everything into a one page format, which is actually a lot harder than getting it into maybe a five or 10 page format. Uh, Cause you have to be very concise. And, and like you said, Alexis, everything it's very jam packed with, with stuff. Uh, and then um, also uh, a, a struggle I've had with trying to publish this was quite honestly, every publisher I ever talked to told me that they are not going to publish a picture book. And so <laughs> I've actually had uh, quite a bit of challenges uh, going against the norm with, with trying to publish uh, something like this. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's exciting that it's finally coming to fruition. I'm, 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 and I'm, I think, I'm very excited. I think that's, um, Sorry, I think that page format is like your signature. I, if, uh, if I didn't know who wrote this book and I took one look at a page, I'd know it was, it was you. Because I've got, I've, I've got your handouts from your, your Okay, very good. Thank you. And, you know, I don't, if, once you get the printed version, I, I hope, it, I'm still working with the formatting. I finally figured it out, but, but I don't know, Dana and, and Bill, if you have it, if you have some of the tabs on the side, if you peel it and look to the right, it's red. And if you peel it and look to the left, it's green. Did, did any of your tabs come out? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. So, the, so the, yeah. So anyway, that's the idea. I wanted to be able to read it one way dynamo, one way grasshopper. Um, right. Okay. Sorry. Please, please continue. I just had Don't to get worry. that. It's uh, you know, the book is the Rosetta Stone now. I think between dynamo and grasshopper. Well, a red, Rosetta Stone. I never thought about that. I yeah, see. it's the Rosetta Rosetta Stone of of that. I suppose it is. And you know, it's funny because I actually. I use it myself. I was the other day. I was like, I needed to filter something in Grasshopper, uh -huh. and I was like, I know how to do it in Revit. It's filtered by Bool Mask, uh -huh. and then I peeked over to the left, and I was like, Oh, coal pattern. That's it. And so <laughs> in Grasshopper, so so I I use this as a reference manual. Look at that. That that is proof right there that you <laughs> you have forgotten more than more than most people know. <laughs> I suppose so. So. Um, so there's a table of concepts in the front, uh, which is great. Uh, uh -huh. and, and then there is a there is a node index in the back. So if you're familiar, you know, maybe you want to draw a, a topography or something, then you can go and you can find it on the page. So that's the idea is, is uh, you can kind of reference yourself easy. So the physical book, um, there'll be a physical uh, paperback and then you've got the proof for that. There also will be an ebook and it'll be, It'll be dynamically linked uh, a little bit through the through the um, uh, through the table of concepts and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the node index. You know, it's funny. I was talking to the publisher and I wanted to get those tabs out to the edge, and uh, and I was like, "Can I?" You know, we were having these conversations, and I said, "Well, um, they were like, uh, well, your whole your whole book is a picture, and we don't we don't we don't have there's no text in pictures because I was having it, and I said, "No, my book has." has text in it they're just within the picture and i just confused everybody i ever talked to <laughs> so i'm like you know, i'm like i gotta deal with this on my own but anyway so it's finally yeah. coming out i'm very excited it was a long journey uh and uh yeah it's some i've like i've said i've never talked about the book it's always been kind of kind of personal but yeah i'm, I'm excited it's finally coming out you know i i always question the the need for it as well you know so it's it, uh, but Anyway, okay, I'll let you talk. I'll let you ask me questions. I'm done. All right, Dana, it's your, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure kidding. you're dying to ask a question. Oh my gosh, I'm chomping at the bit over here. Hey, chomp. So, first off, I must, I must agree with Alexis that I actually learned Dynamo from one of your many recorded um, auto, you know, Autodesk University courses or one of your other recordings that you have available. Uh, one wonderful thing about our industry is that sense of sharing and collaborating together and you know that's i needed to learn dynamo and in your practical dynamo sessions definitely helped me along the way so definitely have a lot Great. to thank you on that as well so um, you're welcome in addition this book is gigantic like just like <laughs> alexis said like literally when i got it i was a little overwhelmed uh -huh. i was like oh my gosh like how am i even like how do i am i hope there has a great navigation system of this book and there 
is first off the concepts is fantastic i love that it's not contents that it's concepts but not only that but it's broken into four parts you have first the geometry part second the database in particular the revit database part Third is the C sharp custom notes part. And then part four is the interoperability. So those tabs that Marcella was referencing before um, actually go through and you can see very clearly on the sides what part each section is a part of, um, which is incredibly useful um, when you're trying to get through and understand what types of things you're trying to do with the database. Um, so that's really fantastic. And of course, Outside of the table of concepts, the node index in the back is really fantastic as well. So if you, you know, like Marcelo said, if he knew that it was a filter by Boolean mask, he could look that up in the Dynamo nodes and easily find a page where that would be mirrored on the other side with, with Grasshopper. So very wonderful navigation because like I said, when I got this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is just so so like obviously very excited because it's so full of information but it's cataloged so beautifully like outside of your typical uh, layout um you know just the way it's all brought together i'm guessing you had to really comb through and decide like how how did you even do that like how did you uh, decide a, what was going to go into the question part? i wish you know um uh for for the listeners uh the, the website for the book does have an example of the the tape the the node index so maybe bill you can um, you could reference the readers there so they can kind of understand what we're talking about but yes this was this was the focal point the node index was the focal point of the whole book because you needed to actually know uh, where where to go uh, and because because this took a very long time a very very long time it took me it took me it took me quite honestly months to get this worked out because because of two reasons. One is um, is that I'm not working with a word document. I'm working with pictures, right? So so I can't just it just can't easily you can't just easily say generate an index and then it generates it, right? So I had to I had to uh, basically hard code in the images with metadata. Uh, these are all made out of Photoshop files. What nodes were in there? So that uh, as I generated the node index, it was it pulled that kind of metadata in. So so that's how that was done. Uh, first of all, that took a while because that had to be done by hand. And then second of all, uh, quite honestly, uh, Dynamo has a very good way of organizing nodes. Like for example, uh, point by coordinates, you know, or something, or create by coordinate. Uh, yeah. So. So, so it's very organized. Grasshopper, on the other hand, is a little more uh, loose in terms of uh, its naming convention. So, so every single node that I had to do for Grasshopper, I had to make a decision. Okay, how am I going to name this? How is it going to be consistent as it, as it kind of relates to its equivalent with Dynamo? You know, where does it go? Uh, you know, that sort of thing. So, so I, had to, um, I had to really be, be, be very, um, <laughs> quite honestly, I had to be uh, very very careful with that, uh, but but in the end, um, I'm really glad I went through that because it it really it really helps. And you know, the birth of the node index and the table of contents it was called table of contents for a while, and then I changed it to concepts uh, to be more in theme with the book. But the reason it was the reason I I started was I would do I would guest lecture uh, at uh, at uh, USC to a architecture uh, graduate class. And I would bring the draft of the book and I would always be like, okay, let's look at this example. And I'd have to flip through hundred pages. And the professor there said, you need to make an index. You have to make an index. So, um, <laughs> so I've been told that for a long time. Finally, I finally, um, it wasn't ready to be, to make an index, but as I, as the book started settling down with the examples, uh, then I was able to finally, um, make a, make a note index. So, so uh, Dana, I'm really glad that you said that because I, I worry that it is, um, you know, it's not that intuitive or easy to use, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I quite honestly learned a lot on how to make an index. Uh, and then there are certain things. Uh, I love that you did. It's not only like a podcast. It's also a book reading by Marcelo because the, oh, the yes. introduction mm -hmm. says a lot in terms of the way that the book is broken down and, and kind of what your mindset was. And I think that's really important. And reading through that, you specifically say um, that 
you know, each workflow is a maximum of what, eight nodes. So, you know, knowing that and going into knowing that, you know, each workflow is just, you know, a basically one workflow within Dynamo or, or Grasshopper that you can then add to other workflows to make more robust workflows, but it's just basic pieces of, you know, glimpses of what you can do with the software. So it, you know, once you kind of get your mind around that, it's also a little bit easier to, to, to you know, embrace, I guess. Yeah, Dana, I think you said it. And I made sure I tried to say that in the intro, you know, how many people read the intro, but, but you're right. If you don't, if you don't go in the book with that frame of mind, it's a little hard to wrap your head around it because you, you typically think of a reference manual, like a cookbook, it's going to contain everything. But, but you wouldn't want to go into a cookbook and say, well, I know the concept of how to mix chocolate, so now I can go and do brownies. It doesn't work like that. But, but, but with, with Dynamo and Grasshopper, as I learned over the years, like Alexis took my class, it's, it's a matter of getting individuals excited and started. And, and what, what helps this book, quite honestly, is all the intelligence of the AEC professionals because they're all made up of very smart individuals who can take this and just run with it. And, and that really helps a lot, um, quite honestly. All right. And, you know, with the, in, with the index, like, for example, things sometimes aren't so intuitive. So, like, let's say you want to, like, maybe someone who's new to all this. Uh, what I tried to do, too, with the index, by the way, is, is you know, look at people who are new to all of this. And so, so if someone wants to build a structural beam, um, you would, in a node index, it's called uh, structural framing. But I also tried to be careful and say, well, if you're looking for the word beam, then, okay, go see structural framing. Or if you're looking for filter, go see bull mask, you know, that sort of thing, because it's not, it's not always so intuitive with the way these kind of nodes are named. All right. Carl, you've got a question. I know you do. Just, just waiting, waiting my time for the, for the right moment to, to pounce on Marcella with, with my, my thoughts and opinions. Okay. And Carl, I have to ask you, um, how was your digital experience with the book? Because it, this, um, th this, this will be an ebook as well as a, as a hardbound uh, book. Did it lose any of the, the flavor or the, the, the realness? Well, it, it, it lost that funky sound that, that Bill played for us. <laughs> but aside from that, you, you know, it's all there. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Um, and I think a lot of people uh, to this day kind of like the idea of of a digital book you know they can carry it around with them anywhere uh you have the ability to zoom which i guess technically you can do with a magnifying glass with the regular one um i i have several copies of books where i have both i have the hard copy and i have the digital copy because i'm a bit of a digital order that way um so i enjoyed it i didn't think it lost anything i was able to certainly uh enjoy it quite a bit and a couple of things that that I took from the book itself. Um, we had had a conversation and you had mentioned about the idea about people sort of saying, where's this, where's that? And I think the fact that you called it a reference manual sort of puts that to, uh, that to rest um, with, with the fact that that's not what it is. You're, you're not buying this book because it's Marcelo teaching you how to learn Dynamo or how to learn Grasshopper at a conference. There's lots of ways to do that and lots more in the future. Um, but this is really, like you say, for somebody that's either just learning and, and wants to, you know, further their knowledge or somebody that's been doing it and forgets like you did, you know, how do I find bull mask or whatever? And they go into it. So I think reference is a very good way to call it. And a, an example from the industry, from our good friend, Dan Stein, the polar bear, no, the armadillo, now that he lives uh -huh. in Texas, uh, is <laughs> he, he did a book a couple years ago that he, he does yearly with, with all of his books. He's a, he's a very pro prolific author, uh, but it's a, a command reference for all the commands inside of Revit, architectural only. But it's a great book. I've used it. I always recommended it to my students, but it's exactly that. It's a reference. It doesn't teach you how to use Revit, but if you're trying to find that one command that's nested three layers down into a thing, it's there. All the information you need is there. And that kind of reminded me of, of this book, how it's really a reference to get you over that hump for that one thing that you, I remember how to do it. I know there's got to be a way. What's a quick and easy way to get me started, as we've said, and I think it's a great example, down that rabbit hole. Um, so so for me, it's perfect. It does exactly what you meant for it to do, and I think it's going to be an awesome reference for uh, years to come. 
Right. Thank you. You know, it, it's about, if anyone's curious, it's about 300 pages long. Uh, but just like Alexa was saying, if you, if you just happen to open a page and stare at it, um, it's just jammed with a lot of stuff. And the idea is you have to basically read all the steps and all the little footnotes uh, to, to kind of get a good grasp of, of the, of the example. And, and the reason it's jammed so much is because quite honestly, this, these could have been, each example could have been five pages long. Um, but I really, I really spent, quite honestly, that's what took so long to write this is I, I really had to, to make it simple, to really simplify it. And I, I, there were times when I was ready to break ranks and say, no, I'm going to split it in two pages or three. And I said, no, no, I can't. I got to stick to my one page format. And, and I, I was, I was, uh, I was able to finally. Marcelo, do it. that's, uh, that's actually another thing I appreciate about this book is the pages have so much information jam jammed on them that it just, it's like, a, it's, it's like a, I don't want to say work of art, but it's like a, it's a testament to the fact that nothing, you're not letting anything go to waste. Every bit, every image, every arrow, every bit of text, you're trying to make it count for something. And that's, that's going to say something to, to efficiency in, in our profession, right? It's, uh, it's in our blood. You know, Alexis, thank you for bringing that up. I, I thought about that before maybe a month ago it, it hit me that you know, really this book is 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 kind of a mirror of our industry i mean if you think about it the idea here is that it's these are concepts to get you going to tell a story to be on your way uh they're, they're the use is that it's a one page summary and every little nook and cranny is taken up similar to how struck uh drawings are done i mean they're 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 kind of telling a story right and i i thought that it it kind of mirrors it kind of mirrors that yeah we do in design is is telling a story that's a, that's 100 percent correct uh but you i don't i you know every single page one, one thing is I, I i wish i could i wish i could do like a dvd commentary on on each page because there has been so much internal struggle with with where things are why i put them there the notes i did how because uh, you're looking at a final version, but you know there were 20, 30 iterations easy for each page, and and there's a lot of uh, blood and sweat <laughs> on every page, uh, <laughs> so it's a, uh, you know, it's it's nice to kind of see it finally come together. But yeah, I, I can I could write a book on the book. You could write a book on the book. <laughs> well, maybe you need to do an audio version of the book as well. I could do a, a book on paper. And then I'll describe the nodes, and these are the input ports. And right, you just talk about it, then you go beep, and then you turn the page, and then you start talking about the next page. That's funny. You know, um, this book uh, too is, like I said, it's 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 kind of a, a summary of 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 the of what I've had to deal with in in the industry. Is 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 I try to kind of when I do something, some of it's against the norms, and I've gotten a lot of resistance. Like like when I first started modeling the elephant and Revit and so on. You know, it's cool, but why? You know, when I when I first started talking to publishers, I've had four four basically slam the door in my face because you, you fill out these forms and it's like, okay, explain why this would be important to the industry and how it would benefit and da da da. And then the last question is always, and what percentage of your book are pictures? And I would always put a hundred percent. And so the answer always was, sorry, we don't publish picture books. Ah. So uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, sometimes you know you 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 basically can't give up in this world you just got to keep pushing through even though that door gets slammed never give up what other kind of challenges did you have publishing the book or writing the book in general i mean we we kind of talk on this show it's kind of funny how we in the bim world are also makers in a way and we have all of these weird extracurricular activities and this is definitely one that is a unique one becoming you know writing a book becoming an author so what can you share in terms of that experience um, I, well, okay. Uh, becoming an author, I, I learned a lot. There's the, I learned that, so you have kind of the publishers like the, the Wileys and the, the, the ones that do, um, novels and do, um, like, you know, big corporate companies that, that are, are in the publishing game and do hundreds of titles. Um, you have those, and then you have like the indie writers who do the self-publishing, but all of those quite honestly, all revolve around the same uh, framework of what is kind of allowed and not allowed. And, and so what I learned was that everything I did for this book 
went against every norm that was out there for publishing as an author. Where's your text? Why are your why is every single page bleeding off of the border? Where's your smart index? Where you know why is your text not showing up in a search? You know, like it was just constant going against the grain. So I had to learn first of all what the norms were. And then I had to learn how to get around all of those norms to get finally to a point where I could, you know, get this thing, get this thing um, published. So that's kind of the biggest struggle I had. And, and, you know, I didn't know that I went in thinking that um, I'm just going to upload a PDF and I'm ready to go. And it couldn't have been further from the truth when I, when I, when I started getting all the resistance for that. So, I mean, that's just the kind of the, the organizational side of it, right? like I mentioned with Alexis there, it's, um, per, I had to struggle internally on every page I made. Um, and I had to pick and choose which kind of concepts I would include, uh, and how I would, would summarize it. Uh, that was another big struggle, but, but not to discourage any auth would be authors in our industry. I think if you have something to say, uh, it's definitely the sto- moral of the story is it's definitely doable. And another media outlet is this because what what happened was I was as Alexis and you Dana mentioned you you I think you too Carl huh I mean, you you originally saw my classes and you got inspired by what I had to say and how I had to say it in a simple way but a meaningful way and so I thought you know I think there's other opportunities for me to get the message out and and becoming an author was kind of the next step in that evolution not that I've I've retired from speaking, but, you know, this is another kind of media for me to do that. And I actually have two more titles planned that are going to be coming up in the future. Now that I've kind of got over that original, original speed bump. Any any ideas of, can we, can we get any ideas of what they are? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to write a book on, on how to effectively make a engaging presentation, both live and virtual. So I want to kind of take my last nine years or so of speaking experience and and put them into a book um, in a in one page summary formats. <laughs> you want to <laughs> you want to answer questions when someone's yelling at you from the audience? Here's a one page summary how to do it. You right. want to that kind of thing. So, <laughs> so that's one of them. Uh, the other is that this is the Dynamo and Grasshopper for Revit. I plan to do another series on um, other software. So Dynamo Grasshopper for, for X. Uh, I'm thinking some structural analysis software, uh, you know, things like that. So I, I, I can't wait to, to be at a, at a talk again when somebody is, runs into a problem while they're speaking and then they turn behind them and they open up your book and they look for the thing <laughs> and then they come back with the perfect answer. <laughs> yeah. It might have to be a flow chart, right? Like, yeah. Okay. Is <laughs> Is Heckler standing? No. Okay. Is Heckler yeah. yelling? Yes. Okay. Is Heckler? You know, <laughs> it tells you what to do. It tells you exactly what to do. <laughs> oh boy! Is Marcelo in the audience? Yes. Ask <laughs> Marcelo. <laughs> you know, Dana and uh, Alexis, I, I'm and and. Uh, Carl, I, I'm I'm glad you really said that because I I I still always question the merit of of this book. You know, is it really needed? Is it really wanted? Could people really use it practically uh, in the office? And and another kind of cr- criticism I got, um, I had to um, a newer section is the grasshopper section. So I've had some grasshopper users, some expert grasshopper users, go through this, and and another comment was, well, the beginning part is very skimpy. You're missing this, 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 and this. But but the reason I put these particular examples in was to get everyone prepped so that they could then apply it to Revit. So um, that is basically the whole book is how do you apply Dynamo and Grasshopper to Revit, period. And and anything outside of that, I didn't include in here. Like, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, regression, looping, you know, some of the more complicated uh, uh, Grasshopper um functionality, that sort of thing, uh, because I wanted this book to be a very practical thing that someone could use uh, in their office. Yeah, there's no, no doubt, Marcella, the minute I opened the, the, like, dived into the book and saw that you have Grasshopper on one side and Dynamo on the other, I was like, I said yes out loud, because it's like, you have, um, 
it, you have a lot of Grasshopper users and you have a lot of Dynamo Revit users, but you don't have so many that are, are fluent in both. And even even someone like us that uses this stuff a lot, we still struggle sometimes to to change our mindsets. Like I, the same way with Mac and PC users. Like I can't jump on a Mac and do what I can do on a on a PC. So it's just that alone is 100% worth it. And then you've got all this this other stuff like the the indexing, the C sharp scripts. I can't wait to dive in and get more like. Um, more fluent in C sharp and interoperability firms struggle. Like um, the, it's major, major roadblocks in, in getting Rhino stuff into Revit and, and connecting programs with each other. So the, the industry needs this. So I don't know what uh, people that are telling you know or thinking because I can't wait to get stuck into it. Oh, thank you, Alexis. And you know, you bring up a good point. Uh, you're getting me a little misty here, but you know, one thing I did, another reason I put them together was I realized in our industry that there was a clear divide uh, in a lot of cases, not everyone, that you have in, in design offices, Grasshopper and Rhino users, and you have Dynamo and Revit users. And there seems to be a bit of a divide between the two groups. And I thought that this book would help bring those groups together and work more uh, work more collaboratively together, especially now with this new technology, Rhino inside Revit, where Rhino is actually inside of Revit, that it would then help bridge that gap and get more people uh, working together. And, exactly. and that, was, that was kind of another thing that I wanted to be a byproduct of this book. And so if you notice, the pages actually kiss each other as you turn them, right? <laughs> each concept and the tabs, when, when Dynamo, it lines right up with, with Grasshopper. And, you know, they face each other. So when the books close, they're always working together. I guess. <laughs> um, yin and yang. I suppose so. <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that's what happens. That's right. <laughs> well, and to that fact, and, uh, you know, I, I think that it is extremely timely given the, the Rhino inside Revit, you know, technology that's coming out. Thank you so much to McNeil and, and co., for all of that hard work, because it's really going to allow us to break down the segmentation between the design and what P, you know the architects are doing in Rhino and Grasshopper, and what we're doing in production and in Revit and Dynamo. And it, it you know, for me being a, a Revit person who knows Dynamo, it, it actually does give me a reason to want to learn Grasshopper because now it's actually useful inside of Revit in a, in a way that hasn't been before. So, is there anything that you can tell? someone like me who is not, you know, versed in grasshopper that is trying to learn after putting together this book. Is there anything that maybe you could give me in terms of tips or even the, the other way around somebody that knows grasshopper that wants to learn dynamo. You um, the book. I, the book. <laughs> exactly. The book. Read the book. It's your first stop. <laughs> um, I think we, you know, uh, that, that is a much bigger topic, uh, and I think you had Asan on here uh, last time talking about PyRevit and, and Rhino, the new Rhino inside Revit technology. And I think, I think the need to learn Grasshopper and Dynamo revolves around the use of that technology. And I think my tip would probably be, uh, instead of kind of blindly wandering on what to do, a good thing is to, to wrap your head around this concept of Rhino inside Revit find out how it could benefit you. Then at that point, you would know what you need to do with Grasshopper. And at that point, then you could learn how to use, uh, how to do what you need to do with Grasshopper and what nodes to put down. And then the book could certainly be a good, a good reference for you. And I think this is the theme of your podcast is, is uh, have, a, have, a, have a task on what to do. Uh, and then and then do it. So if you if you're like, well, you know, I I really need to get this this surface from Rhinoceros that is supposed to be topography into Revit, but I don't know how to do that. Well, there's Grasshopper nodes that does it. Okay, well, let me figure out how to do that. Uh, wait, I know how to do it in Dynamo. Okay, well, let me see how to do it in Dynamo. Okay, now this is how I do it in in, in Grasshopper. So I think that's probably maybe a, a good 
a good place to start. Uh, if you, if 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 Revit is completely out of the picture, uh, then um, it's good to understand how the relationship with. Okay, what I learned <laughs> is I learned quite a bit of of, of about uh, Rhino and Grasshopper and their relationship, and they are very similar to Dynamo and Revit, and so it would be good. Uh, for someone who's starting to use Grasshopper to understand the relationship between Grasshopper and Rhino, because you're going to find that they're very symbiotic, just like Dynamo and Revit. And, and a lot of possibilities come out of that because then your, your, your brain starts to imagine what, what is possible and what you can do with Rhino and how you can use, how you can use Grasshopper. And then the beautiful thing too now is that, um, this new technology is not meant to really replace Dynamo, but to, to supplement it. And, and you can start to think about how, how you could use Grasshopper to do these certain things and then Dynamo to do those certain things. And it's, um, you know, marrying the two actually is, is a good thing. And I didn't mention it in the book, and I'm hoping people do it. But, but you could actually, in theory, learn concepts and then basically cross platforms. So you're doing a few things in Di Grasshopper. And then you're doing a few things in Dynamo on the same project. I'm I'm hoping one day um, that you know that, that that people will get there because that's that's that would be a beautiful thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I definitely see you know in, in the work that we're doing and, and the firm I'm with. I mean, we definitely are in the early side working in Rhino using Grasshopper, and then later in the production side using Revit and, and Dynamo. So if we can marry those two. That's just, it seems like the, the best of all things. It certainly, it certainly would be, uh, it's a good, it's a good marriage because it doesn't have to be one or the other. It, it certainly, it certainly could be both. And I, I, um, I tried to emphasize that in the book. I actually, um, in the early stages of the, of my planning of the book, I actually had, um, grasshopper on the right and, and dynamo on uh, grasshopper on the left and dynamo on the right, and then a Revit project in the middle. And then Grasshopper was touching Revit and Dynamo was touching Revit at the same time. Uh, and so I think if I make a second edition, I'm definitely going to be running through some of those workflows because, um, you know, you, you basically could fold the book open and then you could look on the left, you got Grasshopper and you got Dynamo and they're all touching the same database, which is Revit. I think that would be you know, something special to kind of spell out. But, but I'm going to leave that up to the readers for their imagination because, like I said, we've got a very intelligent – uh, community and they, they really come up with some amazing stuff. I'll tell you, I learned some of the concepts I've taught people in classes, and then what how, what they've done with them. I mean, even you, Dana, remember you how you've done all the uh, how you've done all your occupancy stuff. I mean, it's 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 amazing. I'm really I'm really excited. I want this to be the rabbit hole, like Alexis said, for people for people to go down. Now, everyone want to know when it's going to be out? Yes. Uh, when I, is I, it going when to this be? Thing is going to when be. can we pre-order it? <sighs> It is the official release date. Yes. Is December fifteenth. December fifteenth. Yes. Christmas. Right in time for Christmas. Right in time. You could you could get the PDF in time for Christmas, or the or both in time both. for Christmas. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You could yeah. get you could get both. Uh, it'll be an ebook as well as paperback format. Mm -hmm. uh, I am working on a hard cover format that actually is 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 believe it or not a lot more difficult, but I am going to eventually get that out. It'll be kind of a special edition, mm. um, uh, but but anyway, for December fifteenth, paperback, ebook. Search for it on Amazon. You could also go to aeccheatsheets.com, sign up for updates there. They'll definitely mm -hmm. be a link for you, for you to get it to get it there. And we'll have it in the show notes as well. I would hope. Absolutely. Absolutely, and uh, that is a great way to help Marcelo out by buying the book. And it's a great way to help BIM thoughts out by using the link in the show notes. And it's a great way to help the AEC community out. Right. A, and the book is a great way to help the AEC community. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you got to help out who helps out the industry, right? This book is going to be right. so wonderful. The industry. So make sure mm -hmm. you help out Marcelo. I am right. There I, I think everybody should buy two books. Buy, buy one for yourself and one for your best friend. Right. Do you know what it's what it's going to be priced at? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. 
Um, it, I honestly can't announce a price yet because it's still under legal review at the moment. Uh, uh, I just let me. I have to say a few things. One is this is ridiculously expensive to print because it is 300 pages jam packed with a lot of color and variation. I personally didn't know how. I mean, can you imagine if you went to Kinko's full color uh, and you tried to print 300 pages? You know, how much would you be paying? So, so the 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 printing cost is is a lot. Um, uh, but I don't think people will be too shocked when the price gets announced uh, December 5th. I think it'll be reasonable, especially the fact that you, how much you're learning um, uh, and, and what, what, what you're going to, what you're going to get out of it. I can kind of see it this way. You know, even if your company's not buying it for you, you buy it yourself, you learn some of these concepts, you bring them into your office and you say you, you're responsible for learning them and bringing them in. That, that yeah. to me is priceless in my opinion. Um, Anyway, I'm I'm not very good at, at this whole business side of all this. So that's that's my official answer for now. But but you can see the price December fifteenth, and I don't think there'll be a, a big shock value. Yes, Dana may have the final thoughts. But sixteen first place speaker awards, that's pretty incredible. Many years of speaking at conferences, once again, just giving so much to our industry. What is this the class or topic? that you have been the most excited to present on that I haven't yet. That's been or no, in, the, that's in been... all of your presentations thus far. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. I know you obviously get very excited about before all of your presentations. That's just the way Marcelo is. But what, what would you say is the most excited you've been? You know, it's, it's funny. If you would have asked me that four months ago, I would have gave you a different answer, but you know what, what's happened recently. I, I did a class last year at Oxford university and I've done one this year at Autodesk University, and um, uh, it is a bit of a different format. It actually is a best of summary of all my classes that I have taught over 25 classes over the last uh, eight or nine years. I did a volume one last year, a volume two this year. You can check it out on AU, AU uh, website. <laughs> um, and that one has actually been the most fun because because I could reiterate things I have, like I go way back to 2012 um, and it, it's, it was a lot of fun um, and, and, and enlightening for the feedback I've gotten for people who still use some of the concepts that I sent out back 2012, 2013, uh, like, some, like how some people have used uh, some of the rotation methods I set in families, how some people still use some of the mo topography modeling techniques I set up back then. Uh, some of the newer stuff with uh, like Alex, like uh, Dynamo. Uh, and so I have been the most excited about that, uh, quite honestly. And I, I, I hope that that I can do I could do more of them because I have a lot of content to to do from. And what I do just like a best of album is I always slip in a few new examples every year. And so the new examples this year have been on the interoperability using the new Rhino inside Revit technology and how to go from Rhino uh, into Revit. So that, that has been, that has been extremely exciting for me because I can reteach the industry. Some of the stuff I've already done in a, in a, in a very different way. Well, and that's available for everybody to watch as well right now. So to all of our viewers, make sure you go and check out that conference session. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, I've been, I've been extremely fortunate, the feedback I've gotten from the speaker side of it. And like you said, Dana, you know, the, the, just the, the feed, just, just the, and, and that's what makes me, that's what keeps me going is, is, is the feedback, the positive feedback, the, the, the influence I've had on the industry, the new problems that people come up with and me trying to simplify it in a way that I could teach it in an hour and help people. That's what keeps me quite honestly going. And so I, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate that a lot. Well, we appreciate it too, Marcelo. Oh, I'm very because welcome. without without you, look, Dana and Alexis wouldn't be dynamoing as well as they are today. Me too. Me too. And Carl as well. We certainly wouldn't be as vibrant of an industry either. We wouldn't have a right. Marcelo. We wouldn't have a Marcelo. That's right. <laughs> I suppose, you know, I, I didn't mean to talk about this, but back in 2012, when I hit the stage, I was like, who's ready? And, you know, I was throwing my arms around mm -hmm. and I was, I was really showing. And, and a lot, at that time, it was like, whoa, what is this? But you know, as, <laughs> as time has gone on, it's actually there's there's um, 
you know, I was just up on stage kind of speaking my mind and, and telling everyone how I was, how excited I was and how I felt. I mean, it really came from the heart, but, you know, as, as, as I've, as I've seen, um, the industry has, uh, like, especially with conferences, there's more and more, uh, speakers who, who are, um, who are, are breaking from that more traditional, you know, you're the audience, I'm the presenter, everything's kind of straight now it's more you know it's 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 interacting with the audience making them making them feel like they're part of the part of the experience and and helping them and really caring about them uh so it's good to see it's good to see that and i think that's probably one thing i also uh, one contribution i also had to the industry as one well. of my favorite marcello quotes is they won't necessarily remember what you say but they will remember how they made you or you made them feel oh yeah <laughs> And you always make everybody so excited, right? Yeah, thank Nobody's you. Because in the end, we're, we're basically teaching them how to push buttons, right? Yay! So you know, <laughs> it has to be meaningful, and and so so this is this the book is just another uh, media for that. So so I thank you for having me on. I, I've never talked about the book. I I really appreciate it. Um, Thanks for letting us uh, preview it. Absolutely. And thanks for being on. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Carl. And thank you, Marcelo. You're very welcome. Anytime. We will have you on again sooner than we think. Okay, very good. You if all that take makes care. sense. It does. All right. good. You all take care. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Look how long yes. we've gone. Oh, two ovens. Well, we, we, you we, know, we, have, we got 50 we, seconds for two ovens. You know, just like the book, in the back it says two great books in one. That's the back cover. It uh -huh. just two great, two great topics in one. So there, there you go. There you go.